Thiruvallavar, commonly known as Valuvar, was a celebrated Tamil poet and philosopher. He is best known for authoring the Thirukural, a collection of couplets on ethics, political and economical matters, and love. The text is considered the greatest work of the Tamil literature and one of the finest works on ethics and morality. Much of the information about Valuvar comes from legendary accounts, and little is known with certainty about his family background, religious affiliation, or birthplace. He is believed to have lived in Madurai and later in the town of Mylapore, a neighborhood of the present-day Chennai, and his floruit is dated variously from 4th century BCE to 5th century CE, based on the traditional accounts and the linguistic analyses of his writings. Mariamalai Adigal gives 31 BCE as the birth year of Valuvar. Valuvar has literally influenced every scholar down the ages since his time across the ethical, social, political, economical, religious, philosophical, and spiritual spheres. Because the life, culture and ethics of the Tamils are considered to be solely defined in terms of the values set by the Kuril literature, the government and the people of Tamil land alike venerate Valuvar and his work with utmost reverence. He is known by numerous honorific designations, such as saint, first poet, divine poet, Brahma, and great scholar. Life There is negligible authentic information about the life of Valuvar. In fact, neither his actual name nor the original title of his work can be determined with certainty. Tarukural itself does not name its author. Reminiscing this, Monsieur Ariel, a French scholar of the 19th century, famously said of the Tarukural thus, C.E. Livre sans nom, par un auteur sans nom. The book without a name by an author without a name. The name Thiruvallavar was first mentioned in the later text Tiruvayuva Malai compiled c. 10th century. Various claims have been made regarding Vallavar's occupation. One tradition claims that he was a pariyar weaver. Another theory is that he must have been from the agricultural caste of Velalars because he extols agriculture in his work. Mu Rigava Iyengar speculated that Valuva, in his name as a variation of Vallabha, the designation of a royal officer. S. Vayyapuri Pillai derived his name from Valuvan, a pariyar caste of royal drummers, and theorized that he was the chief of the proclaiming boys analogous to a trumpet major of an army. The poem Kapilar Agaval, purportedly written by Kapilar, describes its author as a brother of Valuvar. It states that they were children of a Pulaya mother named Adi and a Brahmin father named Bhagwan. The poem claims that the couple had seven children, including three sons Valuvar, Kapilar, and Atikaman and four sisters Avai, Upai, Uravai, and Veli. However, this legendary account is spurious. Camille Zavelabiel dates Kapilar Agaval to 15th century CE, based on its language. Various biographies mention the name of Valivar's wife as Vasuki, but such details are of doubtful historicity. George Uglo Pope called Valuvar the greatest poet of South India, but according to Zavelabiel, he does not seem to have been a poet. According to Zavelabiel, while the author handles the meter very skillfully, the Tarukural does not feature true and great poetry throughout the work, except, notably, in the third book, which deals with love and pleasure. This suggests that Valivar's main aim was not to produce a work of art, but rather an instructive text focused on wisdom, justice, and ethics. Topic. Traditional account 
Traditional account has it that Valuvar was left as a newborn child in a grove of alupe or oil nut tree Mahua and under a punai or mastwood tree Calophyllum inophyllum, near a temple sacred to Shiva at Mylapore. He was found and raised by a Valalan couple. Once when Valuvar helped a farmer from the town of Kaveripakam named Margasahayan by saving his crops from a disease, Margasahayan offered Valuvar his daughter Vasuki in marriage as a token of gratitude. Valuvar and Vasuki earned a living by weaving clothes. Valuvar purchased thread from a merchant named Alailasingan, who became his lifelong friend and disciple. Alailasingan owned vessels and thus traded overseas. Valuvar is said to have authored the Kuril text on the insistence of Alailasingan's son Arliyakananthar. On the advice of Alailasingan and other friends, Valuvar took his work to the Madurai College at the Pandian King's Court at Madurai. Poetess Avayar and poet Idaikadar are said to have accompanied Valuvar on his journey to Madurai. Upon reaching the Madurai College, he presented his work to an assembly of 49 poets presided over by the Pandian king. His work won the ordeal set by the assembly and was eventually accepted unanimously. The 49 professors along with Avayar and Idaikadar sung in praise of Valuvar and his work, which was compiled into an anthology named the Tiruvayuva Maalai. When Vasuki died, Valuvar buried her body in a sitting posture. Lamenting her death, he composed a quatrain that reveals his deep love and affection toward her. E.J. Robinson translates, though not in quatrain, the verse composed by Valuvar on the night of Vasuki's death as follows. Topic. Date The exact date of Valuvar is still under debate. With his time being uncertain, the exact time when he authored the Kuril text remains even murkier. The Tarukural has been dated variously from 300 BCE to 5th century CE. According to traditional accounts, it was the last work of the Third Sangam and was subjected to a divine test, which it passed. The scholars who believe this tradition, such as Somasundara Bharathi R and M. Rajamanikam, date the text to as early as 300 BCE. Historian K. K. Pillay assigned it to the early 1st century CE. Linguist Camille Zavellabiel is certain that Tarukural does not belong to the Sangam period and dates it to somewhere between 450 and 500 CE. His estimate is based on the language of the text, its allusions to the earlier works, and its borrowing from some Sanskrit treatises. Zavellabil notes that the text features several grammatical innovations, that are absent in the older Sangam literature. The text also features a higher number of Sanskrit loan words compared with these older texts. According to Zavellabil, besides being part of the ancient Tamil literary tradition, the author was also a part of the one great Indian ethical, didactic tradition. As a few of his verses seem to be translations of the verses in Sanskrit texts such as Manavadharma Sastra and Kautilya's Arthasastra. S. Vayyapuri Pillai assigned the work to c. 650 CE, believing that it borrowed from some Sanskrit works of the 6th century CE. Zavellabil disagrees with this assessment, pointing out that some of the words that Pillai believed to be Sanskrit loan words have now been proved to be of Dravidian origin by Thomas Burrow and Murray Barnson Emino, with the exact date of Valuvar still under debate. Taking the latest of the estimated dates, the Tamil Nadu government officially ratified 31 BCE as the year of Valuvar. From 18 January 1935, as suggested by Marimalai Adigal, the Valuvar year was added to the calendar. Thus, the Valuvar year is calculated by adding 31 to any year of the Common Era. Topic. 
Topic: Birthplace. As with most other details about Voluvar, the exact place of his birth remains uncertain. Voluvar is believed to have lived in Madurai and later in the town of Mayalapuram or Tirumayalai present-day Mayalapur in Chennai. There are also accounts that say he was born in Mayalapuram and later moved to Madurai in order to publish his work at the royal court. The poem Kapilar Akaval states that Valuvar was born on the top of an oil nut tree in Mayalapuram, while verse 21 of the Tiruvayuva Malai claims that he was born in Madurai. In 2005, a three member research team from the Kanyakumari Historical and Cultural Research Centre claimed that Valuvar was born in Thirunayanarkarichi, a village in present day Kanyakumari district. Their claim was based on an old Kani tribal leader who told them that Valuvar was a king who ruled the Valuvanadu territory in the hilly tracts of the Kanyakumari district. <laughs> <laughs> Death Valuvar survived his wife for many years. Nevertheless, he was affected profoundly by Vasuki's death that he secluded himself from social life and devoted the rest of his life to religious contemplation. At his deathbed, he expressed a strange desire according to which his body should not be cremated but exposed in the open air outside the town to be devoured by crows and other scavenging animals, and it was done so. On the spot where Valivar's corpse had lain, Alailasingan built a temple and instituted worship. The temple remains today, albeit in a comparatively modern form, at Mylapur. <inaudible> Religion Valuvar is generally thought to have belonged to either Jainism or Hinduism. Valivar's treatment of the concept of ahimsa or non-violence, which is the principal concept of both these religions, bolsters this. In particular, his treatment of the chapters on strict vegetarianism or veganism, chapters 26 and 32, and non-killing, chapter 33, reflects the Jain precepts where these are stringently enforced. The three parts that the Kuril literature is divided into, namely, Aram virtue, Poral wealth, and Inbam love, aiming at attaining Vidu ultimate salvation, follow, respectively, the four foundations of Hinduism, namely, Dharma, Artha, Kama and Moksha. His mentioning of God Vishnu in couplets 610 and 1103 and Goddess Lakshmi in couplets 167, 408, 519, 565, 568, 616, and 617 hints at the Vaishnavite beliefs of Valuvar. Other Eastern beliefs of the poet found in the book include previous birth and rebirth, seven births, and some ancient Indian astrological concepts, among others. Nevertheless, even in the introductory chapter, Valivar's invocation of the Supreme Being does not give us a clue to his religion. However, owing to the Kuril text's non denominational nature, almost every religious group in India, including Christianity, has claimed the work and its author as one of their own. <laughs> Jainism Camille Zavellebiel believes that the ethics of the Tarukural reflect the Jain moral code e.g. couplets 251-260 talks about moral vegetarianism, and couplets 321-330 talks against killing. Zavellebiel states that the text features several purely Jaina technical terms, such as the following epithets of God. Malarmakakinan couplet 3 He who walked upon the lotus flower Aravalyantanan couplet 3 The Brahman who had the wheel of dharma 
Enkunatan, couplet 9. One of the eight fold qualities. Adipakavan, couplet 1. The primeval lord. Zavelabil notes that even the 13th century Hindu scholar Parimalal Hager, who wrote a commentary on the Kuril text, accepted that such epithets are applicable only to the Jain Arhat. Some other epithets mentioned in the text also reflect a strong ascetic flavor characteristic of Jainism. Ventudal Ventamai Elon, couplet 4. He who has neither desire nor aversion. Poravile Aintavitan, couplet 6. He who has destroyed the gates of the five senses. Zavelabil further states that Valuvar seems to have been cognizant of the latest developments in Jainism. Zavelabil theorizes that he was probably a learned Jain with eclectic leanings, who was well acquainted with the earlier Tamil literature, and also had knowledge of the Sanskrit texts. Topic. Hinduism Multiple Hindu sects have claimed Valuvar as one of their own and have tried to align his verses with their own teachings. Shaivites have characterized Valuvar as a devotee of Shiva and have installed his images in their temples. Topic. Other claims Anti-caste activist Ayyuthi Thass, who converted to Buddhism, claimed that Valuvar was originally called Tiruvala Nayanar and was a Buddhist. Thass described him as follows, Tiruvala Nayanar was born in Madurai, as the son of King Kanchan and Queen Upakeshi. When he grew up, the prince wandered across many countries, until he joined a Buddhist Sangam at Thinanur. There, he learned about the Buddhist doctrine from his guru Chakaya Munivar. Thass further contended that the name, Tarukural, is a reference to the Buddhist Tripit a.k.a. He claims that Valivar's book was originally called Turakural, Three Curls, because it adhered to the three Buddhist scriptures Dhamma Pataka, Sutta Pataka, and Vinaya Pataka. According to Thass, the legend that presents Valuvar as the son of a Brahmin father and a Parayar mother was invented by Brahmins, who wanted to Hindu as a Buddhist text. Christian missionary George Uglo Pope claimed that the Tarukural shows Christian influence, particularly from the Alexandrian school. He theorized that Valuvar came into contact with Christian teachers such as Pantinus in Mayilapar and incorporated the ideas from the Christian scriptures in his text. Pope goes on to praise the Kuril text as an echo of the Sermon on the Mount. In the introduction to his English translation of the Kuril, Pope even claims. I cannot feel any hesitation in saying that the Christian scriptures were among the sources from which the poet derived his inspiration. Nevertheless, Zavelabil states that Pope was rather overenthusiastic in discovering strong traces of Christianity in the Tarukural and dismisses Pope's hypothesis as based on vague impressions. Since the 1960s, some South Indian Christians led by M. Devanayagam at the Madras Christian College, have even attempted to characterize Valuvar as a disciple of Thomas the Apostle. According to this theory, Thomas visited present-day Chennai, where Valuvar listened to his lectures on the Sermon of the Mount. Several Tamil scholars, both Christian and non-Christian, have criticized this claim as inaccurate. Nevertheless, Zavelabil also points out that the chapters on the ethics of moral vegetarianism chapters 26 and 32 and non-killing chapter 33, which the Kuril emphasizes emphatically and unambiguously unlike the Bible or other Abrahamic religious texts, suggest that the ethics of the Kuril is rather a reflection of the Jaina moral code than of Christian ethics.
Topic: Literary works. Tarukural is the chief work attributed to Valuvar. It is one of the most revered ancient works in the Tamil language. It contains 1330 couplets, which are divided into 133 sections of 10 couplets each. The first 38 sections are about ethics aram, the next 70 are about political and economic matters poral, and the rest are about love inbam. The text has been translated into several languages, beginning with a translation into Latin by Constanzo Besci in 1699, which helped make the work known to European intellectuals. Tarukural is also the only work attributed to Voluvar. However, claims are made that Voluvar was also the author of two Tamil texts on medicine, Nanavatian and Pancharathnam 500 verses, although many scholars claim that they were by a later author with the same name, since they appear to have been written in the 16th and 17th centuries. These books, Pancharathnam and Nanavatian, contribute to Tamil science, literature and other Ayurvedic medicines. In addition to these, there are 15 other texts that are attributed to Valuvar, namely, Rathna Sigamani 800 verses, Karpam 300 verses, Nadantha Thiravukal 100 verses, Nadantha Saram 100 verses, Vaithya Sathram 100 verses, Karpaguru Nul 50 verses, Mupu Satharam 30 verses, Vada Satharam 16 verses, Mupu Guru 11 verses, Kavu Una Mani, 100 verses, Aeni Yetram, 100 verses, Guru Nul, 51 verses, Serpa Chindamani, a text on astrology, Tiruvayuvar Gyanam, and Tiruvayuvar Kanda Tiranadanam. Nevertheless, several scholars, such as Devanaya Pavanar, deny this claim. Topic: Memorials. <inaudible> <inaudible> A temple-like memorial to Valuvar, Valuvar Kadam, was built in Chennai in 1976. This monument complex consists of structures usually found in Dravidian temples, including a temple car carved from three blocks of granite, and a shallow, rectangular pond. The auditorium adjoining the memorial is one of the largest in Asia and can seat up to 4,000 people. There is a 133 foot tall statue of Valuvar erected at Kanyakumari at the southern tip of the Indian subcontinent, where the Arabian Sea, the Bay of Bengal, and the Indian Ocean converge. The 133 feet denote Tarukural's 133 chapters or Athakarams and the show of three fingers denote the three themes Aram, Poral, and Inbam, that is, the sections on morals, wealth and love. The statue was designed by V. Ganapati Stapati, a temple architect from Tamil Nadu. On 9 August 2009, a statue was unveiled in Ulsor, near Bengaluru, also making it the first of its kind in India for a poet of a local language to be installed in its near states other than his own homeland. There is also a statue of Valuvar outside the School of Oriental and African Studies in Russell Square, London. The government of Tamil Nadu celebrates the 15th, 16th on leap years of January, the second of the month of Thai, as per Tamil calendar, as Thiruvallavar Day in the poet's honor, as part of the Pongal celebrations. Topic. See also Sarvina and Tiruvayuvar statue installation Valuvar Kadam List of Sangam poets Thiruvallavar year Topic Notes equals equals citations <laughs>